The wheel pan's currently on the vehicle. Our uh, single piece glass fiber, uh -huh. reinforced plastic, mounted exclusively to the inside of the wheel. Uh -huh. You can see that they have been moved on substantially, improved yeah. uh, since the uh, original um, sole appeared on the Jay Leno show, uh -huh. uh, primarily by the addition of this uh, mounting point okay. and by uh, an increase in the stiffness of the assembly. Uh, for aerodynamics purposes, the um, future versions will have covering for the suspension mm -hmm. and will have uh, mounting points not just on the inside of it, but on the outside to a bearing inside the wheel. Oh. Because uh, you want to increase the stiffness of this assembly okay. to get the natural frequency of vibration above uh, your road frequency of, of, of operation. Mm. So it has to be both over the suspension frequency, a couple of hertz, and over the once per revolution frequency of the wheel rolling, which forces it into the 40s. Okay. And so that requires a very uh, stiff assembly. How are you going to get the thing to the outside? How's that? Well, how are you going to bracket that? It goes in the outside of the hub or wheel. Oh, okay. Yeah. You'd, you'd have a dowel sticking out, and then you would set the wheel pan over that dowel, and then it would set on that to like to the forward. center part of the yep. hub. Center part of the center part, part of the of the wheel or hub. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. All and right. Then, he can probably show you in CAD um, kind of how that looks. And so would that make changing the wheel harder? Not necessarily. Uh -huh. um, you would, it would add the steps of having to remove the outer um, attachment points, but okay. if you keep the total number of attachment points the same and uh -huh. just put them where they're the least stiff part of the assembly so that um, it stiffens up the wheel pan as you assemble it, okay. then you get the, the same benefit of it without having to in increase the time to need it to take off and on a wheel. And then... These will be toolless removers, or you need a small tool to remove it, probably? Uh, I'm promising nothing more than simple hand tools. Okay. And um, I have been asked to see if I can deliver no tools whatsoever okay. and 30 second wheel pan removal. We'll see how okay. well that goes. All right. All it, right. It, 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 it's, it looks possible right now. It's a now. doable problem, you it think? It looks possible right now. We'll see how uh, it goes in engineering and testing. Okay. But I, I am going to tell you that you're not going to need. Um, a special uh, fitting for an air chisel to remove them. Okay, okay. You want to uh, take them through your cab as a new design? All right, let's do it. This second battery is dying. Okay, you can, there's a third battery in there. Was that loud enough? Uh, we can always try to up it in post processing, yeah, I think. Inside, try to be as loud as we can. Gonna have some time later? Uh, yes, sir. And so then, like, somebody in your zone would be the McMaster fire. And that's how it worked for now. And we're working. So, when I talked about. I can do it. Full coverage. Uh, what we met was the this uh, second piece is mounted permanently to the uh, hub carrier and uh -huh. does not have to be removed for uh, so this changing part. a tire. Yes. Okay. That does not have to be removed for for replacing a wheeler tire. Okay. And then the uh, outer wheel pan is made with an inner liner that first uh, protects the um, inside of the wheel pan from damage and the light from damage, but also, but also um, prevents having um, air flow get caught at the back of the wheel pan. So. Okay, so like this is covered right here? That's covered, yep. And then this, this is covered? This is covered. And, okay. And uh, that way it, it forms a closed section. Okay. For structure. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so it's a lot Makes it more rigid. Yep. Yep. Is there like a hole for the steering control arm? Uh, that's that's part of this 
Expo right now, but oh, they okay. will be changed uh, depending on where the, the steering uh, link ends up in production. Uh -huh. It will change where these openings are. Okay. The exact locations of the attachments as well as the bracket connecting to the inside of the hub are still under development. Got it. Got it. But we have found a set of quick releasable ball pins that don't cost a fortune and a half and should be able to provide adequate clamping force. So this is a different material than the composite body of the Aptera? Possibly. Because it's thinner, right? It doesn't have to be as rigid. Uh, actually, but, but that hasn't been finalized it had, either. It, it, the final material selection mm -hmm. will be dependent on the results of engineering analyses okay. uh, done, but I expect that this will have a composite material of a very high stiffness to weight ratio, just okay. because it... Uh, it itself experiences accelerations uh, substantially above that of the body. The, right, the suspension it's got well, to move. The suspension, the suspension works. Uh -huh. The acceleration of the body is much less than the acceleration of the wheel going over the right. road. Right, right. But the wheel pit is effectively rigidly fixed to the wheel. Correct. And therefore, it'll have the same acceleration yes. as the wheel going down the road. Right. And you'd have to make it something that's like relatively inexpensive to replace. Um, can I introduce <laughs> yeah. the concept of the ethylene vinyl acetate? Uh huh. Okay. Because, um, like, I expect that I might run into a curb with that thing yep. at yeah. some point. So that's as I click on the wrong tab. The okay. quick pause for. This is to show people. This is just to show you what it is versus uh, making part of a video due to the. Uh, current state of the of this portion of the CAD. Uh -huh. But what we're going to do is, since the vehicle has to be parked against it, uh -huh. at the front and rear. Sorry, this is rotation reference is currently off. We will have this ethylene vinyl acetate foam. Okay. For the back <laughs> and the front of the wheel pan. Okay. And that is a, a closed cell foam with a. Um, very high resiliency. Uh -huh. It'll bounce back to its original shape. Okay. After compression of even 70 or 80 percent. Okay. So that's the little stuff we saw in the beta renders, which is a slightly different color. Yes. Uh -huh. And the idea behind that is that it would absorb up to um, 500 joules of energy uh -huh. when backed into a curb without damage. Okay. Like, I think what people are worried about is, like, the thing is wide, and you, like, if you're trying to, like, parallel park the thing, mm -hmm. that, like, you might scrape, you know, like, people scrape their front, their wheels on the curb and stuff. Yep. And, like, is there going to be, like, some kind of camera that sees down there to look at it, and, like, uh, if, if you have to replace this thing, of um, that, is it going to be, like, yeah. super expensive? They're working on a down-facing vision system to uh -huh. let you have parking awareness. Okay. Not only where the wheel pants are, but also when backing up. Okay. Uh, we think it's right. It's kind of hard to tell where the rear wheel is. Yeah. In relation to typical vehicles. So. Okay. So that is a thing that's that a consideration. Are, yeah. The other consideration is that as you back into a parking spot, the wheel is turned. Yes. And therefore, you'll make contact with that rear um, EVA component. Right. And it was chosen to absorb the amount of energy that you would get if you backed into a curb at one meter per second. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty, if you pretty go fast. In, so if you go in at five meters per second and slam it into the curb, well, you're going to be replacing the yeah. wheel pad. You're also going to be replacing half of your uh, outboard suspension. Yeah. But if you come in at one at um, you know one kilometer an hour, uh -huh. nice and soft, it'll go boink. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, do you want to talk them through kind of uh, how we've removed the rear uh, and front portions of this for better ingress and egress off-road situations? So for off-road situations. Uh, you can see up front the split line uh -huh. between this EVA foam 
and okay. the um, hard wheel pad. Uh -huh. And for off-road situations, the approach angle would be substantially improved by fitting a, an EVA foam component of a different um, shape. Uh -huh. The hard wheel pan itself would have a very good approach and departure angle, so it would be unlikely to make hard contact with the ground during an off-road maneuver. Uh -huh. And then um, you just make it so the EVA didn't catch as frequently. The EVA foam components, in the event of damage, can be removed and replaced relatively easily. Mm. Um, almost certainly, it's, it's designed to have one pin on the inside right now, but um, in the event that we have to retain it at two locations, it's it's two pins. It shouldn't okay. be too bad to remove or replace one. Hmm. They... The idea is to have a, a wheel pan that uh -huh. exists um, in the same fashion for both the off-road and on-road kit. Right. Uh, you just change out kind of the front and rear components of the wheel pan. Right. And the component would be this highlighted component? Yep. It would be in the area here. Yep. Forward of the forward of this. Do you have a wheel model in here? Uh -huh. uh, I think. This has a wheel model. Yeah. And so um, the cut line would actually be forward of this. It would be somewhere along this path. Okay. And that way you'd have, it would be very difficult to make contact with a very small portion of, of hard wheel pan uh -huh. there. Mm -hmm. And at the back something similar would occur where you'd have a, a, good, a good departure angle yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That also helps you in turning, because when you turn these wheel pants, the tail of the wheel pants is, swings around. Is long, yeah. So an off-road situation is going to have a lot of stuff. Right, yeah. right. And it will be a shorter tail for the rear wheel, uh, for the rear part of the wheel pan for the off-road one because, again, you have a departure angle as you come in, as you come between a downhill and a flat. Would there be a problem with just taking off the wheel pants completely? Uh, aerodynamics. Right. But if you're going off-road, you're probably not going that fast. Sure. Sure. But you... You got to store it you gotta, Yeah, you, yeah, you got to store it somewhere. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we agree on those answers. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to share on the uh, wheel pants? Or? Uh, I don't have anything else that I, I'd like to share on wheel pants. Okay. Uh, a fairly long list of requirements that should provide a um, an engineering solution that will test through cleanly. So we'll we'll, we'll have customer representative tests as well as uh. some situations such as um, getting North Carolina red clay dirt packed into them and then mm -hmm. going for a drive. Right. I think the other issue that some people bring up, like people that live in really cold areas, like they're afraid of snow like building up in there. Snow's not nearly as bad as red clay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I, I um, figure like the heat of the motors would melt a lot of the snow once you start driving. No, our motors are sufficiently energy efficient that that's actually, that, that doesn't That probably happen. won't happen, huh? Um, but what's what does happen is that the tire itself mm -hmm. has a relatively low coefficient of friction on ice. Okay. Which means that one thing, for one thing, you can't just put down all the vehicles power and accelerate as just as hard on ice as you can on dry pavement. Uh -huh. But on the other, it doesn't um, get caught. As soon as the ice starts forming, it starts forming a smooth layer of ice inside there. Uh -huh. You know, And if you get snow packed in, it'll actually form itself to it. Think of uh -huh. uh, watching a lathe turning at relatively low speed okay. on soft material, uh -huh. and it'll actually just form to the outside of it. And you can actually experience, see this on um, passenger cars up north. You'll you actually see a built up layer of snow yeah. that doesn't interfere with the wheel huh. uh, for very long. Right. But it, in those, like, the wheel moves up and down with the suspension yeah. in the rear, rear well. In this one, it will be perfectly smooth because it this thing, the yeah. whole thing moves in a, yep. as an assembly. Yep. And yeah. And it would. You 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 might hear some uh, noises as you go over a severe bump enough to fracture the ice and have it drop out of your wheel pad. Right. Okay. The clunk. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, it's unlikely to damage the wheel pan because uh -huh. uh, ice is a lot less stiff and less strong than any of the materials we're considering for the wheel pan. Okay. And That's good to know. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people had concerns about that, but I think I, it makes sense now that you talk about it. It's mostly self-clearancing. The wheel itself, the tire itself uh, can deflect out, out of the way. The In the event that you get a very hard sheet of ice built up the entire way in, uh -huh. um, the 
there is the, the rubber itself will, de will deform out of the way briefly mm -hmm. and knowing that being from Worcester, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. I know there is going to be one spectacular situation where exactly the wrong type of ice builds up <laughs> and at that point I, I'm going to say that I'm designing the attachment system to be slightly weaker than the um, wheel pad itself so oh. if it breaks, it breaks a couple dollars worth of, of hardware and puts you out of service rather than breaking your wheel pad and the late assembly off. Okay. But the, the goal is that for it to be able to survive um, most winter weather conditions, uh -huh. including almost all of those encountered in, in a lot North of orders from the Netherlands, so we want to keep those people in Sweden and the exactly. Netherlands happy. Oh, exactly. right. Okay. Yes, they have to... It, it, there will be some weird condition, but it's going to be so far out in, the, in a corner case mm -hmm. that... Um, it won't be experienced by the vast, vast majority of people using them in cold northern climates where it snows frequently. Okay, got it. Of course, it doesn't affect me a bit because I live in Southern California, <laughs> so. <laughs> but, all right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Rob. Uh-huh.